I'm one of the members of uh, Menendi Chamber of Commerce. I'm an investor from New Zealand and been here for last four years. I have a lot of challenges with the councils, with the government, with the people of Fiji. I'm here to build some apartments as, as the government wants people to invest. I'm one of those. I'm very close to Nandi town. I bought about five acres to build 150 apartments. I built 12 only so far because as soon as I got the approval to build the apartments, I built it and the EFL which has approved for the power, after building, they said I have to pay $33,000 for the transformer. So I've asked them, why didn't you ask me in the first place? Apartments already built and now you're telling me. So to seek assistance, I ran to FCCC. They can't do anything about it. I went to various government departments. They can't do anything about that. And I was stopped here. I still, about, still have about four and a half acres to build. I don't know whether I had to pack up and go or still stay in Fiji and seek some assistance. There, there is a, we, I'm only about 400 meters away from the main Nandi Suva Highway. The location is behind Car City, I believe everybody knows that, and there's a three-story apartment already built. I've tenanted about 50% of those, and as soon as apartments are built, they said $33,000. Next, they came to about $22,000, and they've settled with about $11,500 to pay for the transformer. Where do they get these figures from coming from $33,000, I don't know who they're talking to, and coming down to $11,000 at the end, and then put the power in there. I have to get the power in because I have a mortgage of about five, $600,000. I cannot keep this apartment empty. Now, nobody wants to help for that 400 meter road to Tarsil so that I can build some more apartments at the back. They can Tarsil on Vutwalevu about 10 kilometers, and I'm only 400 meters away from the main highway. And Nandi wants to be a city. Where's the beautification? I'm here to invest. Who can answer me? Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Um, great to get your feedback. Um, in the budget, we've announced $1.5 million, uh, where we have said that people who carry out developments um, and they need access to utilities like, for example, uh, transformers, electricity, you know, uh, extensions. Uh, we will actually pay those costs up front. Um, so I don't know whether you, I don't know whether you missed out or not because you, you said a lot of things whether you've got your transformer in or not. Um, but uh, that's one of the things we have announced because we recognise there are some people. You know, we, for example, we have uh, people who started off uh, small chicken farms. And they, and they build upon it and they get quite big and they need a three-phase power. So if EFL says, you know, uh, upfront with $80,000, uh, then they cannot afford it. So we have provided incentive, $1.5 million in the budget. So you can make those applications through the uh, Ministry of Economy and, you know, uh, and Commerce and Trade. And we'll pay that uh, to uh, EFL. We've also had discussions with EFL because generally EFL wants the money upfront. Um, obviously, they... Um, they're not, they don't require the whole amount up front. We also are saying to them that they need to, like any building, when you have a contractor, you don't pay them the entire sum of whatever, $500,000 for the apartment, you progressive payments. So similarly, we're going to do that with EFL ourselves, but that's how it addresses. In respect of the road itself, uh, I don't know whether it's within the municipal area or not, that particular road, or within the boundary area, but most certainly we'll take a note of it and we can get back to you on that. No, but, but whether it's within the boundary area, I'm not sure. Is it within the boundary area? Okay, well, I will talk to Adish Narayan uh, Naidu about that. And we can, we can have a discussion about it, but also FRA. Um, and, you know, uh, look, I mean, my, my approach is this. Uh, the system is not necessarily perfect. We are, we are dealing with a number of uh, uh, issues, a number of bureaucracies that have been fairly archaic. We accept that. Um, the reality of the matter is that uh, we have to fix it up. Uh, you know, take a very um, uh, positive approach to it, uh, as opposed to be kind of being confrontational about it. Uh, I'm, 
system is not perfect. Of course, system is not perfect. EFL may be, you know, wanting money up front. We're changing that system. In the same way, many people complained about uh, STEM duties. Uh, now that's gone. People wanted uh, the STEM duties to be reduced. It's gone now. A lot of people did not want, uh, wanted the business licenses to be reduced, the amount of money. It's gone now. So in the same way, you know, we provide this incentive for the utilities. So they'll incentivize a lot of people or assist people. Uh, in respect of other areas, we need to have a collaborative approach. It can be frustrating. I accept that. Uh, and there are a number of agencies that, um, that are better than others. So I, I, you know, I, my job is to try and give the positive feedback to those people. There's a lot of <clears throat> young people coming through the civil service too. They think very differently as opposed to perhaps people who've been within the system uh, for a number of years and they think very differently too. So for us, it's also a kind of, you know, psychological mind shift that needs to take place uh, within the bureaucracies themselves. And we've been thinking for decades. Uh, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer to be able to get rid of the archaic way of thinking. But we're quite happy to get your details and talk to you. Thank you.